All right, welcome to another example for the moment distribution method. Here we have um, quite a different beam from what we've previously done. Here we have a beam with uh, two middle supports. Uh, three of these are rollers, one of them is a pin. So notice that we don't have fixed ends on any, any side of these. We also have a uniformly distributed load, four kips per foot. And then we have two point loads. Uh, both 16 kips acting at the middle of both of these spans, spans um, A, B, and then C, D, okay? So when we're going to do the moment distribution, oh, and also note that um, EI is constant. So when we do this moment distribution method, um, obviously the first thing we want to do is calculate the distribution factor and the fixed end moments, okay? I'm actually going to do the fixed end moments first because there's something special about the distribution factor we need to know. So let's actually do the fixed end moments first. Now this is a little bit interesting because um, previously we've only dealt with um, one type of load on each span. Um, so say for instance AB uh, in this case we have this uniformly distributed load and then we also have this point point load of 16 kips how do we deal with two different loads when we calculate fixed end moments well it's not as hard as you may think um, the fixed end moment for a b so on the left side of a what we're going to do is we're going to use the method of superposition and what that states is that since there are two or more types of loads on span a b we can actually calculate the fixed end moments for each one separately. So we can do the fixed end moment um, for this uniformly distributed load, and then we can also do a fixed end moment for the 16 kip load. Okay? And remember, on the left side of A, or the span AB, it's negative. So for the 16 kip load, well, that's, that's in the middle, so we can use PL over 8, negative PL over 8. And then to that, you would add the distributed load for AB. Um, for AB, you know that um, for the uniformly distributed load, you know that to calculate fixed end moments, your equation is WL squared over 12. This is for a distributed load. This is for a point load acting in the middle. Both of them are negative because we're looking at the left side of span AB. And so for the fixed end moment, for BA, so now we're looking at the right side of this span AB. Again, you do the 16 kips first, and then you do the uniformly distributed load second. So you do each one separately, and then you add them together. Okay, so for uh, the fixed end moment for AB, it's PL over 8. So it's negative P, which is 16, times the length, which is 18, uh, divided by 8, plus the negative W, which is 4 kip per foot, times L, which is 18, and that's squared, right? Um, divided by 18. I'm sorry, divided by 12. Okay, and if you do the math, you should get negative 36 minus 108, which is negative 144. So the fixed end moment on the left side of span AB is negative 144 and on the right side it's PL over 8 again that's 16 times length which is 18 over 8 plus the WL squared which is 4 um, length is 18 that's squared right uh, then you have 12 um, you should get 36 plus 108 is equal to 144 okay so now let's move on to span BC. BC, notice it only has one type of load. It's just this uniformly distributed load of four kips per foot. So the fixed end moment for BC, or the left side of span BC, is just negative WL squared over 12. And that's equal to negative 4 times L, which is 20 and 20 squared, right, over 12. And if you solve this out, you should get negative 400 divided by 3. 
and that is about negative 133.33. So that's the fixed end moment for the left spot, left side of span BC. And for the right side, you have fixed end moment CB, right? You're looking at the right side of span BC. And you have, again, the same thing. The fixed end moments for a uniformly distributed load is WL squared over 12. W is 4. Length is 20 feet, right? 20 squared over 12. And if you solve that out here, you get a positive 400 over 3. And you divide that, and you should get a positive 133.33, right? So I'm going to move this up just a little bit. The fixed end moment, <clears throat> so the fixed end moment for CD. So now we're looking at this third span CD. Now here we have a uniformly distributed load and we also have this 16 kip point load. So again, on the, on the left side it's negative. We're gonna do the dist, uh, point load first, so it's PL over eight, plus the uniformly distributed load, the fixed end moment for that which is negative WL squared over 12. And that's equal to negative P is 16, length is 18, right? Over eight uh, minus W, which is four, length is 18, 18, that's squared over 12. Uh, you should get negative 36 plus negative 108 and that should be equal to negative 144. And then finally, you have your fixed end moment for DC. So now we're looking at the right side of span DC or CD. And you have a positive PL over 8 plus positive WL squared over 12. And the P again is 16. The length is 18. You divide that by 8. Um, plus 4 is the weight. Uh, length is uh, not 20, it's 18, right? 18 squared over 12. Again, you have 36 plus 108 is equal to 144. Awesome. So notice that uh, on the fixed end moments for A, B, and B, A is negative 144 and 144, and then it's negative 144 and 144 for span C, D. Um, makes sense because the beam is pretty symmetrical, the distributed load is symmetrical, and the point loads are symmetrical. So these uh, turn out to be uh, pretty good values. Um, in the next video, we're actually going to do the distribution factor, and it's a little bit different from fixed end moments. I'm sorry, fixed and distributed factors. Um, so we'll actually do that in the next video. All right, see you then.